For today's session, we're going to uh, go over a little bit of the anatomy, uh, including the muscle structure of the head of a bonobo. So the bonobo and the chimpanzee split off uh, about 3 million years ago uh, from a common ancestor, uh, and they separated and developed into their own separate uh, species. Uh, the chimpanzee and the bonobo are basically separated by uh, a waterway, and uh, the chimpanzee is a far more aggressive ape than the bonobo. The bonobo is much more peaceful, but the anatomical structure is very similar. In fact, until relatively uh, recent times, uh, at the advent of DNA, uh, bonobos, when they were uh, found to be in zoos, were frequently referred to as pygmy chimpanzees because they're so similar, they were just uh, quite a bit smaller. So that is just kind of an interesting side note. But today we were going to talk a little bit more about the skeletal structure uh, of the skull, the osteology of the skull, and a little bit about the muscle structure of the chimpanzee and many, uh, or the bonobo. In many ways, this, uh, they have a lot of things in common muscles with, in terms of the muscle structure with human heads. Uh, the shape is just a little bit different. Uh, as we talked about before, uh, there's a larger projecting uh, brow in the, in the uh, both the, in, well, in all the greater apes, and uh, the mouth tends to be forward sloping and extends out. They don't have a chin, it comes straight back. Uh, their brain case is much smaller than the humans. Uh, they have a much larger jaw. Uh, so one of the main structural differences between the human uh, uh, muscle structure and the human's muscle structure would be the temporalis major and the master muscle on the greater apes is far larger and it's a lot more powerful. Uh, possibly uh, they spend a lot, they chew and eat a lot of vegetation. So definitely uh, helps to have um, a stronger master muscle and temporal muscle. So it's a little thicker, a little bit larger and more powerful. Uh, we'll just go over this real quick. So the, we had the frontal bone up in here. We have the parietal bone, the temporal bone, the sphenoid bone in here. This is the zygomatic arch, which is a combination of the, uh, the temporal bone and the zygomatic bone. The master bone is in here underneath the mouth area. And then this, this whole section was the mandible. The cervical vertebrae come back. Remember the in the greater apes, the cervical vertebrae connect a little bit more to the back of the head as opposed to the underneath of the head in humans. Uh, the occipital portions back in here, this is the mastoid process where the sternocleidomastoid muscle will connect. And so now let's just go over a couple of the muscles real quick and then, um, and if you noticed, I blocked a, a, lot, a lot of this in in advance um, to save you a little bit of time uh, in hearing this explanation. But to begin with, this is the temporal muscle and it sits on the temporal bone. And again, that's one of the largest and most important muscles in the apes. The other one is this master muscle that comes through here and through here, and that's used for chewing. Uh, that's a very large, powerful muscle. Uh, both these muscles are the same in humans. We then have the, uh, the frontalist muscle, which sits on the top of the frontal bone. In around the eye, there's the obicularis oculi. The little muscle group that comes across here is the nasalis muscle. Uh, remember, they don't have a big projecting nose like we do. It's relatively flat. Uh, there's a little bit of cartilaginous portion that sits on top of here, so that's why it's raised ever so slightly. Uh, but there's the bone really is, would run right through and underneath here. The maxilla is what projects out, and across the maxilla, we have the obicularis, uh, let's see, obicularis oculi is up in here. Then we have the obicularis oris that wraps around the mouth. It comes in across the top and the bottom, so that's the obicularis oris. Then we have 
this little section underneath here is the quadratus labii uh, muscle. Now this portion here, the orbicular uh, orus wraps around through here, but this little section here is the triangularis muscle. And the, that exists on the human as well. So it comes out of that. This muscle through here is the buccinator muscle. Uh, humans have a rosarius muscle that sits on top of this, uh, but the greater apes do not have the rosarius uh, muscle. So that's just the buccinator muscle. Then this is the zygomatic major muscle, uh, which connects to the zygomatic bone. The zygomatic minor muscle, which aids in uh, animals and in humans smiling, this is the zygomaticus minor. It connects to the zygomatic bone in humans, but in the greater apes, it actually fuses on up here, it blends into and connects to the temporal, temporalis muscle. So that's one thing that's really different um, between the apes and the humans, and it, plus the, the fact that they don't have the rosarius muscle. Uh, then we have this really large, powerful neck muscle. It's powerful in the apes, it's powerful in humans. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It, or, its origin up here is in the mastoid process, and then it comes down here and it will connect to the clavicle, and in this portion of the clavicle, it connects to the head of the clavicle. The other portion then comes down and connects to the clavicular portion. So it splits into two pieces. So that is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's a really important muscle in both humans and in the greater apes. Attaching to the back section here of the occipital bone, is the trapezius muscle. It's the very powerful muscle in our neck and our upper back. And that will come down through here and it will come out and it'll connect near the acromion process area and to the spine of the scapula. And then it moves further down into the vertebral column. But the main portion that we're concerned with here today is how it connects to the back portion of the skull and in particular to uh, the occipital portion. Next to that, this little area next to it, there's a series of neck muscles that come along the side. Um, and they're uh, equally powerful, but they're a little bit deeper layer. And these muscles that come this in this direction, these are the levator scapulae muscles. They run in this direction. Uh, this is the amohyoid muscle and the omohyoid muscle comes through. Uh, it has a tendinous portion in humans, but you don't see the tendinous portion in the greater apes. So it comes down through here, and then there's another portion that will come out this way. Uh, lastly, this muscle that comes through here is the sternohyoid muscle. So we have the sternohyoid muscle, we have the omohyoid muscle, and it comes down and comes through again. Then we have the levator scapulae muscles, sternocleidoid muscle, remember this splits into two portions, the trapezius muscle, the great muscle in the back of our neck, uh, and that comprises the neck. So the neck is uh, pretty important. You can't necessarily see it on the greater apes, but they also have a hyoid bone that sits through here um, that is not visible, so I didn't include it for the purposes of this demonstration. Then the main muscle here uh, of the human head that to, that's really important is the temporal muscle uh, because of how powerful and thick it is. Uh, it's particularly thick in all the greater apes. Um, they have a bit of an indentation here, especially where the area of the sphenoid in, indents, but you can see that it's full and that's because of the muscle structure through here. Then they have the masseter muscle, which is their great chewing muscle the buccinator muscle, and then obviously wrapped around the mouth is the obicularis oris. Around the eye is the obic uh, obicularis oculi. Across the top of the nose, even though it doesn't project out like humans, they still have a nasalus muscle. And then uh, the 
Uh, and then we have the zygomatic minor and major. And up in the forehead, the frontalis muscle. Now they have a receding forehead, but they still have a frontalis muscle that runs across it. So that will um, kind of, uh, and this there is a sagittal crest. Uh, the bonobo, the sagittal crest is less pronounced than even the male chimpanzee and definitely less pronounced than the gorilla or the orangutan. So I didn't include that um, in the bonobo because it obviously is not that, uh, that visible. Um, and then again here we have a fairly large zygomatic arch, a little bit bigger than the human. And so you can see the extra strength in here. And this would be the ear canal, which is the external auditory meatus. And I've included that. And, uh, and what I'd like to do now is I will spend a little time shading this. I'm just gonna do a couple things here and I'll do the rest in the time lapse. But one thing I wanted to point out is uh, a couple, just a couple. So this area of the zygomatic bone has this rounded area. There's a light touch here. So I just wanted to go over a few elements of shading and so you can see how they would apply to different angles and different surfaces. So light on the zygomatic arch is gonna fall in here. So we need to have a little bit of a tone up here. And then a side plane through here. And then all of this is gonna come down under into shadow. So I'm gonna have that little bit of a tone. This portion where it goes under is gonna have reflected light with a core shadow. And right through there. And then we have a little bit of a tone up here on the top. Inside, cast shadow inside the ear canal. It's very dark in there. Reflected light, core shadow, blend that carefully. And then right here in the back, this where the sternocleidomastoid connects. I wanna show a little bit of the bone structure and then have it come into the muscle structure. And then same here, this, so this portion, the muscular portion is gonna connect through here. We'll show a little bit of that connection and it connects here onto the bone. So I'm gonna show a little hint of the bone this is the back portion of the occipital. I wanna show that. So I've made my core shadow in here on the line of the skull. And then there's might be a little cast shadow right in here. The sterno or the trapezius muscle connects here. So we wanna show its origin. Here's the inside, then we have the core shadow and reflected light. Okay, so now then this portion of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, I want to Lights coming from above and from this side is my selected light source. So I want my core shadow to come through here and then reflected light. And I'm gonna blend that carefully. And I want to really enhance the edge of the muscle. So core shadow, reflected light. And it should start to look very rope-like and more powerful. I'm gonna do a little bit of core shadow and reflected light on the other side. And then I wanna show the connection here. And right in here, there's a bit of a cast shadow 
behind the bone structure of the occipital. So I'm going to place all of that into shadow, all of this into shadow, and I want to show that connection a little cleaner. And so then one other thing I just wanted to show is right here on the masseter. So as this comes down and wraps under, we want to make sure we have core shadow through here, core shadow through here, and then reflected light underneath. And then I want to show that we know it's muscle structure, so I'm going to add some of this textured line. But it's important that even though we want it to look like muscle structure, that we still think of the principles of shading. So it's darkest through here, it blends carefully into the half tone, and then it goes, wraps underneath for reflected light. Same here with the triangularis muscle. So this whole bottom section here, we have to think of the bone structure here and how it will go under and then everything underneath falls into reflected light. So all of this is going to have core shadow all the way through here into the chin. Or actually, technically, it's not the, ch the chin on the ape. It's the uh, mental protuberance that, where it juts out there. Remember, this goes back. The apes don't have a chin. So there's a little bit of cast shadow underneath the lower lip. And then this section in here is the mandible. The mandible might have a little bit of a tone here. The buccinator muscle connects and runs on, across the top. So we want to keep in mind the, the skeletal structure. Same through here. We have this back portion here. This is the back of the mandible. And the muscle connects to the zygomatic arch. Same in here. The, this muscle is going to connect to the zygomatic arch where it goes underneath there's a little bit of a tone through here so i want to show that i know where this muscle is connecting to the bone so in here i'm going to show that i know where it's connecting to the bone and because i partially drew that bone in here. Now I want to go back in here and lighten the top so we can show the muscle grafting onto the bone. Uh, we still want to see the structure of the bone, but we also want to know, want the viewer to know that the muscle comes in here and it does connect onto this bone. This is part of the skull through here. Now we want to connect this so that there's light right up here on the top. All of this has a side plane. And the zygomatic muscle right through here has a little bit of a tone. So as you can see here, we're now we're starting to uh, make this begin to look a little bit three-dimensional. So that gives you just a little bit of an explanation of shading this underneath portion. Uh, and inside the nostril, there's a cast shadow right through here, core shadow up in there. Now all of this is going to fall down. The bottom plane falls into shadow. And so what I'd like to do now is I'll go ahead and finish shading this in a time lapse, but I just wanted to go over a little bit of the principles of shading as it applies. So you can see that 
each one of these little forms uh, needs attention in terms of the elements of shading. They all need to have the core shadow, they need to have reflected light, they need to have cast shadow, and at the very end of the process is where I add the highlights. So the elements of shading are highlight, light, halftone, core shadow, reflected light, and cast shadow. This bottom section in here, I'll do one more thing really quickly, is all of this is gonna fall into, we'll have the mandible and the muscles across the mandible all cast a shadow onto the underneath portion of the neck. So we can very quickly just run through here and put a tone across all of this. Uh, when we do the time, when I do the time lapse, I can uh, add some more individual attention to some of the muscle structures. But basically, it all needs to fall into shadow. So all of this in here is going to have a tone over it. Okay. So now it should start to look a little bit more. Uh, three-dimensional, same with the temporalis muscle. This is all going to, all of this portion will fall into shadow and I will shade all the individual bits and pieces here in the time-lapse. So there we go. Temporalis muscle, one of the largest, most powerful muscle in the greater apes. The masseter muscle uh, used for chewing. Then we have the bicularis oris obicularis oculi, which is very similar to the human. Uh, big, powerful neck, neck muscle is the sternocleidomastoid, and it splits into two pieces. It has the main head and then the uh, clavicular portion. The large muscle here in the back is the trapezius, the levator scapuli, the omohyoid, the sternohyoid, and so forth. Uh, and one of the other things, remember the uh, buccinator, does not have a rosarius running across it in the chimpanzee and the bonobo, but it does in the human. And then the zygomaticus minor uh, connects to the zygomatic bone in a human, but it connects actually to the temporalis muscle in the bonobo and the chimpanzee. And while their nose is flat, you remember they have cartilage in here, and this is still their breathing apparatus, so it is uh, when you apply the skin and the cartilage, it does have a little bit of a projecting nose, but when you look at the skeletal structure, there is no projecting nose whatsoever. Uh, a human's would be much further out uh, because of the bone structure underneath. So I will go ahead and finish the rest of this in a time lapse. I hope you enjoyed this, and hopefully you will find this useful for learning a little bit about the muscle structure and the osteology of the bonobo head. Thank you.